This is the brand new City 300 Pro from Pixapro. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Tommy Reynolds and I'm a portrait and travel photographer based in Southeast England. And today we're gonna to be looking at the brand new City 300 Pro from Pixapro. If you're looking for a new portable light source, maybe you've got one that plugs in at the moment, maybe it's quite old and you want something that you can take out on location or one that you don't need to plug in, then this could be a great alternative. So here's the City 600 Pro and here is the 300 Pro. As you can see, quite a big difference and quite a lot different in weight as well. This is far heavier than this one. So this is a great alternative if you're looking for a nice, small, portable light source instead of a bigger 600 Pro. Now I use the 600 Pro for quite a few years now. I've used it as my main key light when I'm in studio environments, but I wanted to see if this could handle using this as a dedicated key light. And I have to say, I'm really impressed so far. Let's get into some of the features that I really like about this. So I've done a couple of shoots using this already. I was using this as well as other strobes around me, using this as a key light. But before I show you more of that shoot, I wanna show you a quick shoot that I did here in my small home studio with my friend Joe, using just this as a single light source to give you an idea of what can be achieved using only this strobe. Now possibly my favorite feature actually about the 300 Pro is not only the portability, but the modern light here is actually built extremely well. You can actually dim this modeling light from one all the way up to 10, something that you can't do on the City 600 Pro, and the modeling light on the Pika 200 is nowhere near as powerful. When you set this all the way to 10, you get approximately two stops brighter modeling light than you do on the 200. This is really useful if you wanna see exactly how your shadows might fall before you even take the photo, and even looks great if you're using it as a video light as well. As you can see in this example here, the only light in the room is that City 600 Pro. That modeling light set all the way to 10 is going through a 90 centimeter easy open softbox that's going through two layers of diffusion and is still bright enough to light Joe and also for my sister Cassie filming this segment of our behind the scenes, she was able to get a really decent exposure for her video as well. Just bear in mind that there is a little hum on this. Let's have a look, switch this on here. So this is set all the way up to 10. So as long as the light isn't too close to your microphones or like I was doing in this example, you're just using it for B-roll, then it actually works as a really cool video light. Not only can it do that, you can also change the Kelvin temperature of the modeling light as well, going from 3000 all the way up to 6000. You can get 350 shots at full power on a single charge. You can do high speed sync on this and it also has TTL function as well. You've got a menu system where you can scrub through and you can change stuff like the slave modes, the beep mode. And one of the biggest things you get with the 300 and all of the other pro models is that you get the color stable mode. With the color stable mode switched on, you're far less likely to get any variance in the temperature or the tint between photos. If you are firing quickly, you're more likely to get this. This locks the strobe within 75 degrees of 5600 Kelvin over the entire power range. Having used this a few times now, it's best to take an extra battery just in case if you are using the modeling light at full 10 and you are having your color stable mode switched on, I would recommend just taking an extra battery just in case. So for my first few shots here in my small home studio, I use a one light setup, as I said again, it's the 90 centimeter easy open softbox. I've used this when I go traveling with the Pika 200. If you wanna see more then just click the card up there and that will take you to my playlist of all my travel work using the Pika 200 and the 90 centimeter softbox, which I'm using right now to light me up right here. Now, as well as my light source, I am also using a big reflector here as well. The reason why it's so big is because I wanna get a fairly wider shot to get more of Joe's body in. So the reason why I've used a big reflector is then that allows me to park my reflector back a little more some, and I still get the kick up that I need, lifting the unlit side of the shadows up just a little bit. So it feels like there's an extra light source there when actually there's only one light source used. Thank you. 
I'll leave a link to the softbox and the reflector and all the gear used in this video in the description box below. So here's a couple of pro tips when you are using a single light source. As you can see in this angle, the center of light is not hitting Joe. the center of light is almost going past her. This is what's called feathering the light. And this is getting the fall off of light that comes off at the edge of the softbox, which is actually even softer than the center. So this does a couple of things. Not only does it give me an even softer light source, but because the light is slightly moved away from the backdrop, it's pointing slightly away from the backdrop, you actually can make your backdrop darker without having to do anything else. So not only am I getting an even softer light source on Joe, I'm even making that background just a little bit darker to make Joe stand out even more. And not only that, but by feathering it a little bit more, it's more chance of hitting that reflector and actually getting more of a bounce from that reflector just down here. Another pro tip you can use is simply just a hairdryer to add a little bit of movement to your model's hair. So rather than paying out for a big old wind machine where even on the lowest setting, it's gonna be blowing too much, just use something as simple as a hairdryer. And not only that, it also looks pretty cool for your behind the scenes video as well if you are shooting in slow motion. Another little pro tip is you can add some haze in the room. So I've got just some smoke in a can. Not only is it great for the photos, but it also adds something again to your behind the scenes video as well, just to add that little bit of extra dynamic. And then it also makes you look like Terminator in some of your shots. So this next setup I want to show you, it's a completely different day, different studio, different model. Here I'm using the Lost Studios in Kent and we're using the lovely Laura to model for us in this shoot. Here I wanted to use the City 300 Pro in conjunction with other lights that I tend to use on my shoots, including of course the Ricoh 400 Rain Flash, which I'll have a video coming out about that very soon, my retrospective review on that light. For this first setup, I was using the 300 Pro in a 55 centimeter beauty dish with the grid on. I was using the Pika 200 Pro as a background light, as you can see there. And I'm also using my ring flash as a fill light, adding an extra little pop in the unlit side of the face. using the window light as our key light and we're using the 300 Pro as our fill. The 300 Pro is in a beauty dish, again the 55 centimeter beauty dish. Again I'm using a Pika 200 that's hitting the background of the wall to add a little bit of drama there. And again we're also using the Ricoh 400 ring flash as my go-to fill light just to add that little pop as I always like to in these images. The City 300 Pro sits neatly in this S bracket. You can also put your Pika 200s in there as well. To be honest, when I first got this, I didn't realize that it was small enough to actually go inside of that S bracket. You can get modifiers that go directly into the City 300. Personally, I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't bother with it. I would just get the S bracket so that you can then have the Bowens fit here. It's not that much extra in terms of size, if that makes sense. What I tend to do is I put this away in my modifier bag. So I don't put this in my camera bag because yeah, it, it, it's a little bit bulky on its own like that. But I put this in the modifier bag that I often use if I'm traveling. So that stays in there and then it comes straight in, straight on and onto the boom pole and I'm ready to go. That's just my opinion. I think these S brackets are great and it just gives you so much more possibility. Not only can you put your peakers, your 300s, you can even put your standard speed lights in here as well. So it's a no brainer. Always get one of these and have it in your bag or your modified bag. 
One thing I didn't mention is you can change the power of the 300 Pro in 10 stop increments rather than three stop increments. Personally though, I don't really worry about that. My trigger is set up to move in third stop increments. If I'm within a third of a stop, I'm happy. But if you do wanna change the settings on the unit itself, you just hold down the set button, then move up, and then it will move in full stop increments rather than you having to go from, I don't know, 1 16th power to full power, you having to do that. You can just hold it down and move it up and it will move straight to full power so much quicker. Just a nice little feature there that's just, just going to save you that little bit more time when you come to do your shoot. So that is the City 300 Pro. Do you have a portable light? What are you using? Are you thinking of getting something like this? If you are, let me know in the comments. And if you do have any questions about this unit, also leave me a comment below. But that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you liked it, then please make sure you hit the like or share button or subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. And as always, I will see you again next time. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.